When summer madness strikes, it strikes at the heart. Not just for the row, but for the Roy too. Where in Hampshire and Roy's modus operandi is to shower this area with the tune of the butterlo. This has always been his jazz flute of choice. Replicating the sound of a young deer, it offers the chance of romance. To the buck, the audible cue is received loud and clear. Find fawn, find fornication. Finally, the end of the breeding season has come. Not my breeding season, but uh, obviously we've been away with the birds and uh, I've had a lot, a lot of time dreaming about getting out for the row rut again. Um, and here we are, before we know it, it's happening. So yeah, I think we are the 29th today, so we should be well and truly into the rut. Everybody should be feeling it, and uh, it's just so, so nice just to get out. And I think that's one of the most important things when you're stalking, especially in today's hectic lifestyle. When you come out, then you just gotta take a breath, just relax, um, watch nature, watch everything that's going on, and take it in, and just go at the pace of everything around you. So. Yeah, as I say, it is, uh, it's very, very good for you. Your um, pace is always slow. My pace, my pace is always slow and slightly wobbly, unfortunately. But yeah, it's, uh, I think that's why I do so well. They think there's no way that wobbly bloke is going to shoot me. Roy selects his sights carefully, but loses focus when he spots a munty. He lets rip and we miss a row behind us. Number one lesson, don't get carried away with looking at my when you're row stalking. I'm trying to call them, focus on your target, focus on your species. Because we were just calling the number one chunk up there, just having a bit of a giggle. And I just had a horrible sensation that something was coming behind us. What I really love about stalking this time of year is just the absolute way that if you get the row in their, in their summer peelage against the ripe crop, they just shine out just a beautiful red russet in amongst the crop. If you can just see the, the arch of their back, otherwise you've got to be looking for ears and the tops of heads, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. And again, whenever you're out and you see that, and you just pick up that little hint of colour, um, and the excitement begins. Roy doesn't shoot it. No real reason, maybe it's because he gave us a good show, but it's not a buck worth keeping. That was a lovely, lovely little call there. Looking at his head in hindsight, it was very poor. Um, it, just, it was just breaking out at the top. 
so he wasn't quite a single spiker but we'll have a look at him over here see if we can get another look at him but again i just wanted to see if we could let him go bring him back but he was just a little bit cute i mean but then again he was 15 20 yards he came out and had a good look at us um and again after seeing david you can't blame him for buggering off With the light dropping, Roy spots another nice buck along the ride. It's a malform, a buck with uneven antlers. He chooses a neck shot. The 2506 soft nose would have destroyed the meat if he chest shot it. And that was a lovely, lovely response from him. So we just stalked around this corner and he was out just questing for does. Um, just gave him a few squeaks and he just came tearing in. And just a very interesting non-typical head. So he's got a lovely six point one side and a, a V to the side. But yeah, I mean you can see he's been rutting, he's been going for it quite hard. And lots of marks on his face, lots of scratches, so he's definitely been fighting away. So we just took a, a neck shot on him as he was coming in. So we've got the entry. Just here, just below the chin, and then took the neck out beautifully and left everything intact. I don't like taking more than one buck in the rut every time we're stalking because it's it's just nice to get out and enjoy it and uh, and see everything going on. As I say, I think we've uh, we've got a few to catch up on. There's certainly a, a good few um, on here and. Um, we need to start uh, making a few inroads into the boys and then obviously the most important part of any deer management is making sure you catch up with the, the does or the hinds um, in their season. So uh, as I say, a glorious day, a glorious finish and some beautiful responses. As I say, the, um, the second buck that we called in that, uh, that came from the wood line, um, he was really, really lovely. Just, uh, just came down and um, was having a bit of a nose about. Um, this lad, I think, had seen it all before. He was, uh, he was definitely on his toes. He came charging in. Again, he, wasn't, uh, he didn't want to come too close. Um, and uh, I think he was just about to turn and go. But, yeah, we've, uh, we've probably met before. Roy has a peek inside the stomach. He's wondering if the sea of wheat is attractive to the row. So what I wanted to do, because obviously a lot of people do moan about the amount of crop damage that deer cause, I mean okay, I know deer can cause crop damage by going in and couching up in the crop and flattening it and obviously at the start um, when it's all sprouting but after seeing the way that they manage farming um, and large numbers of game over in Sweden um, and speaking with the farmers over there they say that they can support a much higher um, number of game than you'd imagine on, a, on agricultural land um, it was quite interesting because we just wanted to do a quick experiment and have a look at uh, the stomach contents of this particular deer. Um, and most of it in there is browse. Um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't well like to, to even guess the percentages. Um, but it's grass, um, leaf, you know, say browsing and grazing combined, um, and very, very, very um, few grains. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a head or two, I wouldn't even say that. Um, that it's eaten from the crop. So uh, yeah, certainly not, uh, not destroying the crop at all um, and just mainly feeding, 
feeding about and uh, feeding on the, uh, the surrounding grass margins. It's been a lovely evening stalk and all it's done is wet someone's appetite. Just like you. <laughs>